sort of farm for Bone 7. We see four wards up in the Radiant Jungle, two sentries and two observer wards, and placed in different spots than yeah, what we saw last game. Yeah, they do a long because it's 12 again. <laughs> <laughs> well, Enigma I've seen work with two camps. With one camp, I'm not too sure about it. Yeah, not sure where I was going to start off with. You see him by region. He's just going to go into the offline with the, with the faceless void. Yeah, that's the correct move by Ali. He just go away from the jungle. It's a very natural move. It's, uh, you know, when I was playing against VT in the in the finals, I went to the Ancients. In hindsight, I probably should have just gone through the lane. Mm. And it's, a, it's, just, it's just a natural move when you play Enigma if, you're, if your jungle is worded. Because Enigma can can lane very well. You just you know keep the nine creeps. You get all the denies. Blah blah blah. Yeah, we shouldn't forget Enigma's actually a very decent laner. Yeah. Bone Seven putting out a lot of harass with the Treants. See Big Daddy trying to shore up some defenses over here. Not sure if they have enough region versus double range. This time we we already see how how different C9 wants to play the game. They putting pressure on every lane right away. Night Stalker profit off lane. And mass warding. Yeah, and a lot of warding right away. The, let's take a look at their safe lane. I think their safe lane is, could be in EG's favor. Yeah. They don't have the pull though. Hmm. It's like the, the dark of the um, rocket barrage can't be that good against the islands. There's a lot of trades going on. Is having a farmed EE that important though? Uh, level is more important level's than anything. Yeah, no, you don't really need any like particular. Item. You don't have a BKB time in this game, for example. Yeah, this game is gonna start on minute four of the Night Stalker into the Zeus ulti and Prophet ulti and Jaro ulti. This is where the game will start becoming very chaotic. No, nope. Fissure comes out. Yeah, not too sure why. Uh, I think he was getting the creep. I think uh, the idle lance were hitting oh, okay. the big creep and he just secured it. Mm. Looks like farm is about even the miss. Sumail looks like he's about to pull ahead pretty soon. Magic stick already up. Well on his way towards his bottle. Yeah. And this is an even lane. Like yeah. SF has the advantage of getting all the creeps. Because SF. Oh, there we go. Bottom seven gives up first blood. In the dual int lane. Looks first like blood. Night Stalker Just was preoccupied elsewhere. This is not what Cena wanted. Like Night Stalker was uh, going to suicide. He had no mana and was probably low on health too. So Furin has to chill a little bit, stay patient until Night Stalker comes back. But EG grasped the chance right away, just killed him. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't have a TP scroll in his inventory. I don't think he should be dying to that lane when Night Stalker is not uh, he, there. He has to stay patient because like how it goes down is the Night Stalker says, I'm going to suicide because I'm out of everything. I'm going to just TP back to the lane, buy my items, lose zero gold, do the death healing kind of thing. So all the Prophet has to do is wait 30 seconds. But he didn't wait 30 seconds and EG just, EG very good at taking chances. Mm. Just killed the Prophet. Yeah. So it's more of a misplay more than anything else. That's a very rough lane for C9 though, especially now that they've had it the first blood. Now the lane is so much in EG's favor. Like you already see this guy with full man and he has two two points up in the arcane shot. Or yeah, and this is where we can talk about pressure, like the mental pressure of players. If uh, I think if Bone Seven wouldn't be pressured and would just stay cool, he wouldn't have done this mistake. Well, Bone Seven, somewhat of a emotional player, as we see, misery. Fissure down, Universe getting pressured a little bit, but I mean, there's so many heroes that do well with farm inside of EG, like, starving Universe out is not and, uh, even... The later up. the game goes, it might just go in EG's favor, mm -hmm. but at the same time, CNN has a lot of potential. Oh, night time about to open up here at the four minute mark. See EG control the bottom rune, Earthshaker controlling the top for the old Zeus, DD on the bottom, and that will go into Queen of Pain's bottle. That is very bad for... Yeah, that DD rune actually is very, very, very bad for C9. Yeah. yeah, especially against that kind of lane where you can just go in and start right clicking. Yeah. And they did have eyes on it, but... Well, PBD looks like he's going to get harassed out a little bit, but just no, not with the not with Queen of Pain there. At the same time, we see a Shaker rotated in the mid, and I, I wonder if they're going to go for this kill with the Furon teleport. It's a very tough kill. Eight magic stick. Yeah. SF is having a very good game. And Enigma's as right there. Yeah. Enigma I mean, should be six. Yeah, SF is on soon. 34 creep kills. That's oh, wow. He's actually... 
that's the strength of SF against Zeus when when it, when he hits level four five. Like Zeus cannot deny against SF. Don't they need some sort of movement right now though? I would say from Cloud Nine. I mean, they're they're losing all three lanes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the top is going quite okay for them, but yeah, at the same time, it's Enigma's already starting from the jungle. Um, they, they just need their levels. They need the six Zeus and level six Prophet and try to get some kills. But Big might Daddy go for this with the Prophet. TP in, PVD nice. will come in. I think he just says the one. Yeah, nice kill from Zeus. Yeah, very good presence of mind from Fada. Just assist with that kill. Yeah. And now Cloud9 looking to take over the jungle a little bit. It's not the biggest deal for EG though. Like if mm. the Zeus, like Zeus is gonna get a kill with his ulti anyway, and if it's Skyrift, that's the best that can happen to them. Yeah. It's the most worthless hero in their lineup. Well, I don't think they can get this kill. Not without Zeusol, not right next to T1, and not without Nature's Prophet. The DD has been popped by fear. Looks like, I mean, the SF is just completely unchecked. He's not able to utilize his jungle that much, though, because Enigma's occupied, but it looks like he's under some pressure now. Big Daddy coming in from behind. We see Skywrath come in. It looks like Sumail will take a spill. Misery comes in with a Fissure to clean everything up. I think, I'd say that's an okay trade for C9. Yeah. Uh, they I might think even the, get this the trade was in EG's favor, though. Do they the have? Skywrath got a lot of levels from that. Well, at the same time, Shaker and uh, Nightstar Girls got levels, I think. That's true, but they shared the uh, experience through three heroes. Yeah. Compared, I think Skyrim only shared with Enigma. Mm hmm. PPD trying to do the same thing and protect old Sumail in the mid lane. Look how he gets some capture space. I mean, he's not that far behind considering where he had to go. Yeah. EG is like, if both teams have to ask themselves if they're like satisfied with the pace of the game, EG is very satisfied at this point. Nighttime is gonna be soon over, Enigma is starting to farm a lot in the jungle, SF is just free farming too. Queen of Pain is also free farming, they have no troubles in their mind. While C9 is pressured to, uh, to like do something on the map. They also just have a lot better vision on the map too. Yeah. Well, we might die to this last one. Yeah. Nice try from misery there and I mean Night Stalker he's gonna be dead by the time he comes back night time is almost over as you guys mentioned and I mean there's three wards up on EG and I don't think they had that um, block up uh, the pool pool block up before so I mean I think those are pretty fresh gonna last for a pretty long time and I was getting his items yeah, EG is hitting their level sixes too now on faces void soon and even Skyrim is gonna have a six soon well, one uh, last raw before night time ends I wonder if universe didn't see that Night Stalker coming because I think his ward might have spotted him. Oh, nice Fissure comes out. It was a very needed gank. Yeah. Also very well executed by C9. Did, I don't think he smoked. Yeah, he, nah, he didn't spot. I feel like that ward should have spotted him. Maybe he just wasn't pay, paying attention. Mm. Um, because if that kill didn't happen, that's very, very bad for C9. Yeah. But instead, they get the kill. That was like the last effort on nighttime, and it actually worked out. Interesting pickup on uh, Alfiron. He goes for the, the medallion as his first item. Wait, they want to do an early Russian. Yeah. Fear, complete control, bottom rune, DD, illusion, then another DD. Bone 7, still doing okay, but yeah, the medallion pickup, don't they need better map control before they can do Roche? Like, they don't have enough damage, I don't think, to sneak it, like mm. they usually do. And they probably set the idea before the game started what they want to do, like put pressure on them, get the control of their jungle through Night Stalker, and let's just take Roshan. Yeah, it was actually uh, when Night Stalker died uh, uh, in uh, in EG's jungle, he died to Skyrath, uh, Enigma, and Quap. Uh, he was actually on his way to place a ward, but he didn't get the ward out because uh, EG had vision of him. But yeah. uh, I think if that ward is placed, that gives C9 so much info. So it's quite uh, quite sad that they didn't get the word out. And it was just uh, information, Zeus ulti too. He spotted the smoke. Yeah. But he's still going for it. Well, Fear blinks in on Misery. Misery certain to perish, but we'll get some more damage on Fear. And another nice ward placed out. Fear with blink on cooldown for five more seconds. We'll die to Bone7, teeping in for the kill. I think uh, Misery didn't expect the uh, Queen to actually go for that. That's why he stayed around, but he did. And he paid for it too, so that was not worth it for fear. Yeah, and out taking out some stacks right now. Faces Void still one of the poorest men in the bunch. Yeah. 
As per usual, when EG plays their void, yeah. it usually yeah, the, just That doesn't really matter to them. Mm. Like he's getting, he's level seven. That's very good for him. Yeah. I wonder what level Skyrath is. Um, he should be close to six. Yeah, he's getting really close. Like when Skyrath has level six and they have the Chronosphere and Skyrath ulti going on, it's very hard to just stay on lanes. Beer has They're to get up top. Chrono yeah, Sky. And Chrono will go out on Big Daddy. No other ultimates blown. An easy kill. It's a very good gank. For when you have a uh, chronosphere, you, you want to use your cooldown. You don't want to just save it all the time. So you use it on any kill. It's always worth it. Ooh. Sumail going for the Yule's build. Aoi will just use a black hole solo on Fada I and think secure he just wanted another room. to see the animation. <laughs> Oh, it's the same thing that applies to the, the black holes, the chronosphere. Yeah, you want, even though black holes cooldown is huge, you still want to use it. Yeah. Like, uh, for a Zeus kill, that is a solo mid kill, it's definitely worth it. Well, I mean, C9 is falling a little bit behind right now. Nighttime coming about a minute and 20, but I don't really think they got enough mileage out of the early game. And the way their lineup scales is just incomparable to EG. I'm no. a little bit worried come later. I think they're. Uh, their game is going to have to progress through this Nature's Prophet, I think. Um, I think he's going to be key in this game. Yeah. And the things he's going to do is what's going to be able to make C9 go further it's in this game. It's so hard for the for the Prophet to apply pressure in this game. There's a Faceless Void who can jump you. There's Skyrim and Quop, very quick heroes. So I'm not sure what his game plan is. He's going for Necro. Yeah. That's uh, interesting. I'm not sure if that's the build, though, for this game. I guess they have some idea, which I'm not realizing right now. The SF already has his Yules. Yeah, if Fearon stays around, he might die here. A nice try with another setup for a Fissure. Sumail waiting for Bone 7 on Sumail bottom. Sumail is feeling like the king in the game now. He can do what he wants. He has Yules, Threats, he has Haste in his bottle. He's level 11, 11 minutes into the game, 100 creep kills. Yeah, he is like in no danger whatsoever. Oh, and that's another hero that can just pick on Bone 7. I'm not sure how effective he can be. And you see the the Prophet just stays bottom and he can't really do anything. He's just chilling there. Even during nighttime too. It's not it's not a good mentality for Cloud9. No. You see the Night Circle is moving in their secret shop. He's trying to find something. He's gonna try to gank the Void. The Universe is very cautious this time. He just camps his tower. So they're both like if you look at the map, the only heroes that are showing is the SF on bottom lane. And no one else is really showing. Even the Void is not showing yet. Like now he's showing on top lane, so both teams are just very cautious. I wonder if they can actually go for this kill, because if SF has a TP with his yeah, haste and it's, it's not a good kill, I think, too. Yeah. I mean, they do have Zeus ulti and Prophet ulti, but... I thought they are going to go for Fear. Uh, this guy should be... Fear gets the back and back and gets mutation, blown up. At the same oh. time, Sumail goes in with his haste. It's not mana, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, and my God. Oh my. <laughs> Does not have enough mana for a weapon to follow up. Echo Slam comes out on Universe with a whiff Chronosphere and no time walk up for five seconds. Bone 7 TPs in Medallion's Universe and he is trapped inside. And Good God, the wow. Shastra is used. The, the, six, the, the Yules change. Yeah. He's owned yeah. him right there. He, he owned himself with the Yules. Wow. He was probably very confused. Like He was clicking on it and yeah. seeing what's going on, guys. They were in such a good position. Fada dodges the Mystic Flare TP coming in and he will die to Midnight Pulse in a scream from Queen of Pain. I mean, still, that's... A couple of big kills for EG or for Cloud9. That's that's that big was momentum. very needed. I, yeah. Like in reality, they would have just killed the gyrocopter and DG would have snowballed even harder. But now C9, uh, I guess, a very good chance to do yeah. something in this game. Yeah, that's some great picks right there. Queen of Pain building tanky. X coming out first. I mean, he was net worth leader by a good like 2,000, I would say, yeah. e even just one minute ago. And now he's neck for neck with Gyrocopter, Medallion coming yeah. into play, Necro Book, Roshan being yeah, taken I down by both seven. Uh, one of the ideas of the Necro. Yeah, they, they really, really want the Roshan. Can he solo it though? I don't think so. Uh, if he uh, micros well enough to get a second set set of tree, and I guess he can. Well, damage is coming out a little bit slow. Looks like EG none the wiser. Still a little bit yeah. nighttime. They have a couple think, minutes uh, left. Cena and they, they do want to show on the map to make it less suspicious. So they're just gonna start running around. You already see Nice Circus diving deep, he showing on the river runes. I guess mm. this new Necrobook uh, on level one enables you to do Russian. That's true. The oh, HP cool. got buffed quite a bit. Well, Bone Seven looks like he's gonna be able to take it out. In the this end. is gonna catch EG completely out of surprise. Yeah. 
Oh, oh. Uzuzo comes out, will scout out Fear. Big Daddy trying to go in for a kill, but will That's... instead just draw a TP out. Big Daddy trying to run away. We see Enigma come in, but no one can catch him. He will it's run very away. Good. Very, very, very good play from Nolte. Yeah, he like forced him to come there with TPs, waste your time. Roshan is going to fall down. I guess for Zeus. Zeus is like the most... Uh, uh, like vulnerable here right now. So getting Negus on him is super good for us. What build is EE e going for? Sage first again. I'm wondering why he does the same. I, I guess he just want to play cautious. Like he just doesn't want to die. Yeah. To be fair, it's a correct mindset. I mean, he's he's very tanker now. He has the Dominator and the, the yeah. Frost Creep. So I mean, he's sitting on like... Uh, what could it be like uh, 16 armor or something? Oh, yes, the Frost Creep. Yeah, yeah it's a huge deal. If you oh, look at EG's lineup. 27 oh, armors with... Uh, 1.6k HP. So, I think uh, the way Envy wants to play his uh, his Garcrafter is just to be like a frontliner. That uh, top lane go by the SF and the Corp. That uh, was... It ruined uh, the fluency of EG. It ruined everything for them. So they're like struggling to find an opening now. Like they, have to, they will find it through their big ultis. But it's like, uh, they're just in a weird spot right now. Do you think they're pressure to make a move or just pressure to not make mistakes? No, EG is just going to chill. Like, EG is very good at just being patient. Like, every team can learn from that. They, they're just going to wait for the right moment. They understand C9 has ages, so there's no point going for a fight. They might just wait out the ages unless a really good chance just comes up. Yeah. So they just keep farming. They know SF is a good late gamer. He, he has to keep farming at every point in the game. Uh, speaking of chances, he picks up, picks up a blink yeah. along with his yules. Yeah. Oh, he's gonna find the kill. It's a very good kill for him. Yeah. Well, the one-two punch followed by a long-range raise. Uh, Sumail's biggest strength. He's very good at just finding kills alone. Yeah. Like he, we saw it in DAC with Storm Spirit. He constantly just picked off heroes on his own. Hmm. Interesting builds from Fear. He goes for the point booster. Ju I guess just to tank up against all the mid first. Just a casual agonim, it seems. From Cena. But then he goes for the Yules. Oh, let's see. Well. He knows that they were smoked. And Earthshaker, does he have his blink dagger yet? I don't top. believe so. Yeah, well, I mean, they were smoked at 4 kill. Looks like an ult will come out onto EE, but it looks like a tanky build is going to help him out in the end. Mm. And they will take down the Shadow Fiend. That is actually very, very good for C9. Yeah. Even, though Gar even though the Garcrafter dies, uh, the Shaker now has 2.6k gold, so he has a blink. Yeah, he just uh, got a free blink from that. And he's level 9. It's it's like to be level 10. a very early blink for the kind of game the Shaker had to play. Yeah. Like this could have been a 25 minute blink, just because Shaker has nowhere to go on the map. He can't really farm. And it's very hard to kill EG's heroes too. But every time EG puts aggression on Gyro, they pay for it. It's the second time already. Sumail's playing like he can just kill everyone with his Requiem, but after that first bot kill, I mean, everything has gone really uh, downhill. I think for like him. EG is just a little bit too eager in what they're doing. Like, we saw something similar in the first game when they went for the Gyro gang with Klinks and Shadow Demon. Mm -hmm. They're doing the kind of the same thing with two heroes. Like, you gotta move more than two heroes. You gotta move three heroes. Four, move your mech hero. Very important. If the mech is there, no one will die. But instead, they just like they go for random chances, which you have to do sometimes in Dota. But in this case, I think they can be more strategic about it. I mean, they don't have that many windows, though. They ideally want to gank like without the Aegis and during the daytime. And that, that's yeah, true. EG is is feeling. I, I mean, I, I agree with you. Their their late like game a, is certainly better. A lot of aggression just comes naturally from Sumail. Just the way he plays, he's a mm -hmm. super aggressive player. He's a, like he's gonna be there, like on the lanes to find the kill. And then, but they have to, you have to play around your players. At the same time, always uh, gonna try to get, get more powerful on this Enigma. Enigma's gonna C9 with him. a very aggressive move into the opponent's jungle. Fear will get blown up instantly with the fissure. Will he get finished off yeah. though? One more right click from Misery, and PBD gets picked up in the process. Big Daddy diving in between the T2 and the T3 doesn't want to walk into the black hole, but oh, EE finally it. skilled the rocket. Three-man Chrono comes out, but nothing more to show, and Fada will finish off the Enigma. Very good for uh, for C9. This is the C9 we wanted to see. Yeah, that's a nice smoke, a nice observer placement, nice use of nighttime. And yeah, the nighttime, if the, like they have the 
Earthshaker, Blink Dagger, and then they have the night time. They just feel very confident. Oh, I think Prophet has Necro Free already. Right? Yeah, he yeah. has. He had it before the fight. Yeah. And at this point, like e EG had a lot of opportunities. Solo kills from the SF. They had like the Faces Voice Skywrath combo. They had like the Enigma with the Mech. And I mean, he even had that one Black Hole. But none of them have been really been doing anything. Quap had a really easy lane, and the safe lane hasn't really been tr able to transition. And I mean, there's like, uh, the, you're right if you like look at. It. If you look at one thing, there's one pattern you can see between both teams. C9 is playing like a team, but EG is not playing like a team this game at all. They're doing a lot of solo action. Like We haven't seen EG's five heroes together for 20 minutes already. Why C9 is constantly running around together. Yeah, now ES has a blink, and they've lost a couple of fights during nighttime. They lost a couple of towers, and things are getting increasingly difficult for EG, and Cloud9 keeps taking out Roche. I, I mean, EG does have better late game on paper and better team fight, but as you said, they just haven't been together to chain anything. Yeah, they haven't used their cooldowns together. They have Black Hole and Chronosphere, Requiem. Uh, we didn't even really see Quap Altis flying around. It's not the much to be seen. Yeah, they don't see even the have a combination of Skyref Alti with Chronosphere. They can kill anyone. They're, there's no mech on Cloud9 either, and they're they're just they're just simply playing better. Yeah, yeah. And also, I think uh, one really really big thing that uh, people tend to not look at when uh, there's a team fight like this is the vision actually uh, produced by the team fight. So if you look at the map, you see that C9 has these really really deep wards. There's three of them. In uh, in each side of the map, and Zeus Alti, and Zeus Alti. So they're they're gonna be constantly aware of what EG wants to do because EG is not gonna be able to counter these wards because uh, because you don't know they're there. There's basically. too much open space. Yeah, I think the the interesting thing is when you play against heroes like Zeus and Night Stalker, you actually are forced to run around with five heroes just because of the vision game. C9 can do whatever they want because they see them at all times. Well, Misery posted up in a position to defend this tower push from Cloud9, but EG, after being scouted out by the Zeus ultimate, do not look interested at all. And that will be the last bastion for the river for EG. No more defenses there. And this tower push is just like, uh, it just happens because they know constantly know where EG is on the map. They spotted three heroes trying to D war their wards, which just can, enables them to go bottom. You can feel it bottom. in C9's, or they move their heroes. They feel very confident right now. Yeah. I mean, PPD has almost become a non-factor at this point, we have, just because he hasn't been able to been hooked up. Well, Fada will pop a haste rune and escape the throws of EG. And this is just another thing that Fada, like, always does if C9 has a good game. He's just gonna sit in one lane, just constantly push it. People are gonna try and go on him, but they're not gonna get the kill. It always yeah. happens. This is one of Fader's strength. The one reason why Fader goes so well with C9 as a team as a whole. A very good synergy. Gyrocopter building fairly tanky. Similar build to last game with the HOD and the SNY with a nice little Link trusty Alpha Prophet. Wolf. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, he's been able to do very well, I think, given the situation. Aside from that one death where Night Soccer was died, like, aside from that, I mean, it, this is not an easy line to split push against. And, I mean, I, I mean, his team has been providing him with great opportunities with the aggressive smokes. Uh, he definitely redeemed himself. Yeah. He's doing very well. And you, oh. see at, you see at this point, like, uh, what you're just trying to do here is they're trying to kill Fada. But what C9 does in response is they put Shaker next to the Zeus. So if Enigma was going to try and go for the Zeus in that case, uh, they both would have died with Shaker. It might still happen, I'm not sure. Does Enigma have BKB? No. No? Treads blink quick. Okay. So they might. You see him walk up here. Like, uh, oh, they're just gonna go. die. Oh. Sumail goes in for a kill. EE -E follows up and Bone 7 TP and Owie. Black holing, but no oh. one around and. No, they he lost sat the there. Black hole like, too. This is just beautiful play coming out from, uh, from C9. You can really admire it because uh, they know exactly what EG wants to do. They want to kill Fada. And they're not gonna let him kill yeah. Fada. It's just they're just reading that. Yeah. And once again, they see Cena move four heroes instantly to one point. Sumail caught out in the mid lane, does have a Yules, but again, he's gonna drop as soon as he comes down. There's there's nothing to help him out. If he chronos, he's gonna also gonna die. Enigma's oh, already dead. Like Universe goes for a TP out. But we'll have to time walk. I mean, if EG wants to stay in this game, they, they really have to come together with all the heroes. Well, they don't have that much longer on nighttime, but yeah. oh my goodness, PPD gets blown up right next to the T4 Sphere. Maybe looking for a perfect ultimate on the back of our Chrono Sphere, but they're probably going to need a buyback from Sumail. They want to hold this tower. I don't even know if he has enough gold. He doesn't. And you keep in mind, there's no black hole either, because they already used it. 
Yeah, they have to have like a perfect chrono and a scream, but everyone's sitting way behind EE. Earthshaker still has Echo up. I don't know if they can hold this. Rain Drex will fall still. 25 seconds left on respawn nice for Skyrim. All the regions, bro. So they, they understand how the face as void will jump in. Yeah, they, I mean, what do they do? They, they could smoke, but even then... The is trying to run out of the Night Soccer vision, but Night Soccer is very deep. I mean, can they even see any of the heroes down the hill? I don't think so. Not with not with Darkness up. Not yeah. with Darkness, yeah. Well, it looks like they will get a free rack. The two heroes has respawned. It will be a 5v5, but... Again, Cloud9, knowing their window. Nighttime has ended, darkness has ended. Roshan will respawn soon, and looks yeah, they like... Just go for the Roshan straight and play with the momentum. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure if EG has the damage to deal with them when they have the Aegis. I'm not sure if they have the tools either, because Night Stalker just picked up his Aghanims. Um, Gaur just picked up his BKB. Yeah. Uh, Zeus doesn't really have any close... He's going for the Refresher, but he's not really close, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, Cloud9's but really good playing around the Vision, though. They really are. I think yeah. it's one of their biggest strengths, and always has been. That's uh, true. Like, even when they were playing with Pilot Eye and Sing Sing, uh, you always saw these, like, uh, these ganks, where their supports would just camp one area for, like, five minutes straight. And it's just a, like a consequence or a, a result of... EG expecting a Roche and EE will get solo chrono by Universe and will get blown up by Fear as well. Oh, three-man Echo comes out from Misery. Zeus ult to follow, but no one else in sight. EG makes it a clean 2-0. Cannot follow it up with a Roche. See what happens when EG decide to actually go together with five heroes. They instantly find very good kills. Find kills on the, on the Gyrocopter. And combinate their spells. Cool. Well, C9. Uh, do you still think EG can win team fights even with if C9 gets an Aegis? Uh, the Aegis is going to be problematic because yeah. uh, because what EG wants to do is just clone one guy and blow him up. Uh, but if there's an Aegis on the Garcraftor, for example, it's still going to be problematic. Do you think they're going to give it to Fado or EE? Um, I would assume to Garcraftor. I think mm, Garcraftor to just break high, break high ground. Um, Zeus working on Refresher Orb, it looks like. Yeah. yeah. He's gonna have it soon, too. Yeah, he needs another voice stone on the recipe. I mean, to me, this all really came down to that one top fight, where EG had the pace of the game that they were going for, and then they go for a very aggressive play, and Sumail doesn't have mana for his ultimate. Yeah. And yeah, all of that, the Earthshaker got his Blink Dagger. Yeah, that was that was just so devastating, and I mean they had such a good laning phase. Zeus was getting owned by Shadow Fiend. They had got the first blood on bottom. Everything was going well for them, and then just one gross misstep. Well, after like uh, credit C9, the way they turned the game from that point, mm -hmm. they just they didn't give it away. Like you, we barely saw any mistakes from that point from C9. They had yeah. a lot of mental strength. They just played together very nicely, positioned their players and heroes correctly. That is de de definitely true. Well. Nice. Looks like Necrobook will be popped. Roshan is pretty low. Eidolon's coming in. I think the Chronosphere is still cool out. Um, it might be just up again. Yeah. Everything's up. Darkness is up. and They're smoked. But C9 understands that the only way they boost this teamfight is if Garcarpto gets Chrono without the Magus. Yeah. So they're feeling very cautious. And Wants to be sure. I mean, this is Universe looking for oh, an ultimate. And... He has his BKB, he jumps in. EE will also get yeah, Black Hole as well as Chrono, but he pops his BKB beforehand. Midnight Pulse looking to break him down. Sumail will finally get the hit on EE. And Roshan looking about a little over 5% HP. Sumail with no BKB, he yules himself up and looks like he will get the blink off. Universe goes back in and will be able to kill Fada. He will deny himself. C9 with only two heroes left. Bone 7 comes in, goes for the kill on Sumail. And looks like EG will turn to the winds and leave Roche, the prize possession, left for No Tail, as yeah. well as Bone 7. That was a very good timing by Universe to jump into the Roshan. Mm. But uh, the, the Jara positioned himself very nice. He started running away into the middle of the river. But uh, sadly, EG, uh, they stacked both their ultis, Chronosphere yeah. and Black Hole, just for the BKB Gyrocopter. So I think EG could have taken the fight, possibly. Yeah, I think that was really smart by EE. I think if he had tried to go for a Roche, he would have been Chrono, kill Roche, and yeah. then just kill EE. And on top of that, Cloud9 would have been forced to file into the pit because he like moved out exactly. a little bit. And he's, he would, uh, would have put the Midnight Pulse in the pit so yeah. he can't stay there at all. 
Still, they do manage to bring down EE, but at the end of the day, C9 does get another Aegis, and EG will take heavy, heavy casualties. Owie really needs this BKB, it looks like. I mean, they gave the... You just look at this now, because they gave the Aegis the Night Stalker, um, because he was... I guess he was the only one alive. But it's a very useless Aegis. Just... It's, it's I not think, gonna do much. I think, like, because the way he plays, like, I mean, he was literally running in between uh, EG's heroes. Oh, last he recap of the team fight, EE runs out, and here we see the override with the black hole and the chronosphere. Aoi will die shortly thereafter. Misery gets blown up on the side. Sumail, I mean, it, it, it was a pretty darn good team fight from EG, but Cloud9's positioning was just a little bit too good. Yeah. And they have the Night Circle ulti, so they have the advantage of the positioning game. But yeah, EG knew their strength because Zeus had to use his ulti in order to secure the Roshan, or he wanted to. So it, mm. they fought the whole fight without the Zeus ult. Yeah, that was excellently executed. But like, both teams played it pretty good, the fight. No tail, not scared with that Aegis, and PPD feeds away yet one more kill. They will scout out Universe, takes him down to half HP with the Mask Madness popped. I mean, everyone's forced to run away from this Night Stalker. He's, he, I mean, he just has treads and ags, and he just no one can stand up to him. Unless it's a team fight. Yeah. Oh, a completely different tune coming out from Cloud9 in this game. They found their confidence after their first five, ten minutes of the game. I think, yeah, I mean, they just, they are just playing so well. They, their smoke inks are on point. They get huge objectives. Uh, as you said, like the smoke ink in the mid lane where they had four people, they took down a T1 and a T2 and laid three wards. That, again, set the framework for them. Buyback coming out from Enigma. He's very farmed this game, but it hasn't really amounted to much. Actually, he's actually second in, second lowest in net worth. He's been farming all game. He's been having a rough time since C9 is controlling the map. Like he has nowhere to go for like for like ten minutes maybe already. C9 is constantly controlling the map with the Night Stalker ulti, with Zeus ulti. Three man smoke so comes out. There's gonna be a clash coming now. EG is also smoked. Looking to take a fight under the vision of the ward, but uh, it's it's really difficult for them to take a good fight. EG probably wants to put out some wards if you look at the sky ref. Oh, Fear will get... Oh, Fear to be careful. Wow. Oh, he gets caught out after the Blink Dagger. Sumail blinks it with BKB. Call down to follow. Big Chronosphere on Big Daddy, but he has his Aegis. EE has his, has his BKB pop. Black Hole comes out on three. Huge one coming out from Aoi. And that will result in a four-man wipe, potentially, if Night Soccer dies one more time. Sumail is really low. Fada coming in from behind, looking out to finish Sumail off with some lightning. Hmm. I think uh, at this point, like these team fights, uh, they go in Aegis' favor because because of the nature of their draft. Uh, yeah, they, they also get more gold if you see that the gold change. Yeah, I mean, you, you look at their heroes, and even if they're so far behind in gold and XP, they're still it's able to do these plays because their their heroes are so good at tanking team fights. Like the the Chrono into the Black Hole, they can't really stop it. And this this whole team event, unfortunate for C9. Like the Fissure didn't hit the Quap because he randomly blinked up there. Like he didn't see the shaker, he was smoked, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then he jumped like, into the Queen of Pain, who yuled himself. Shaker got silenced, and then he just died. So he didn't do anything oh, in the whole he, team fight. Is he going for Octarine? I guess so. That's gross. A oh, nice stalker. Oh my. I guess it could be really good with the darkness cooldown. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's uh, it's weird more than anything. Yeah. I, think. <laughs> I mean, it's six uh, K gold. I'm thinking if there are better choices for him, we can always get a hex. You can get a Good Dagon going on. You can get E-Blade for your Gyrocopter. And, uh, or Solar. Yeah. Solar Crest, maybe? Yeah, Solar Crest is a huge item. Maybe if you're on, we'll build onto it. Solar Crest is actually an item uh, teams are underestimating too much, from what I've seen. It's actually one of the most broken items. That's what I feel about the item. And, uh, well... AG is just right. Look at them, they're just sitting in their base because they're so scared. MP with the Scythe of Vice completed. I mean, there's no chance they win a fight without their ultimates. And this was with an Aegis onto the Night Stalker. Night Stalker. Yeah. If they have an Aegis on Gyro, I mean, even with BKB though, he, he still can die, right? He has Chrono, he has Black Hole, he's sitting in Midnight Pulse for like 10 seconds, and there's not really that much they can do about that. So, I mean, the, the only way they can do it is take through it with Aegis or a Cheese. 
So Cloud9 definitely going to have to wait for another Aegis to uh, win this one. Maybe with the Blink Hex, they can kill Enigma or Faces Void immediately off the bat. And they have so much backup. If they jump anyone but the two big ulti guys that is Void and Enigma, they just come in and do it. If they jump to Enigma, or the Ooh, nice Fada gets really nice Yules. Haste Stop taken off. Haste. But they're too scared. Yeah, they're very scared. Because every time they've done that, it's a one something before. bad happened. Fada takes Fear's ultimate. And Bone7 go looking to save them off. And Fear will pop his BKB. We see Nice Stalker coming in from behind. Everyone else coming in from the right side. And F PPD. Oh, it didn't. Wow. Oh, I misclicked. Okay. Well, Sumail will... Sumail will get his TP cancelled. EE looking in for a kill. He is locked in with the Beast, but will BKB pop his ultimate? EE counters it with a BKB of his own, and Fear gets echoed in the face. No BKB up for him. Universe with a huge Chronosphere to save Sumail. And will Universe make it out alive? It's not looking good. Another hex up. Do I get silenced? He's Glimmer Cave. I don't know where Necro 3 is, probably somewhere on cooldown. Rocket will come and follow Aoi, but a buyback from Fear. I don't know if Cloud9 heard that sound, but now they will be wary. That was a very hesitant fight. Like, we saw how AG was so... Uh, like, they were hesitating so much to go into Zeus, actually, and then PPD and Fear decided, all right, let's go for it. And every time they tried to do that kind of kill, it kind of went wrong. And same it worked out, but C9 turned very nicely the whole uh, the whole situation. Uh, no tail stopped the TP and just put the urn instantly on SF. And the urn now it, uh, nowadays it just stops the blink dagger from working. So he was kind of stuck. And that was some nice place from from C9. Yeah, his misclick turned into a big boon for them, getting a kill on Sumail instead. Yeah. And he, I think he misclicked on the void on Skyrim. Mm, I th I th it looked like it. And then uh, what turned out to be in his favor to get the uh, Shadow Fiend instead. What's Zeus going for after his uh, refresher? Um, um, I think TBD. Veil or... What does he usually go for? Are there Hex, I think, I Hex think or they, Aghanims? Uh, I know that he... D I know Fader doesn't like Aghanims. Uh, I've seen him going for Dagon. Yeah. But I'm not sure if it's the item this game. I think it's good still. But Glimmer Cape is now there. Like in last patch, Dagon was the item for Zeus. But nowadays with Glimmer Cape... He might go for the Octarine core, maybe, just to have better cooldowns. Mm -hmm. But it's 6k gold of just whatever. <laughs> Could be uh, EB. Hex, uh, e blade. I mean, he has a refresher, so getting an active item is probably better. Double Hex, double E blade, double Dagon. The universe managed to pick up some farm after having a rather rough early game. Uh, if this white would get some more items, he'll become a monster in this game. He What's our Roshan? The gyrocopter. Respawn looking like two minutes post eight. Who knows? I can't look at that clock actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one minute then. That works. There we go. Digital clocks. Let's go. On Cloud9, they're constantly scouting out with nature's uh, prophet's treants. I mean, do you think EG should pick a gem up right now? It seems like... The gem is always needed at this point in the game. Yeah. I mean, Cloud9 have very deep wards. Three right outside the base, one in the Radiant Jungle, and... Uh, I think EG is really thinking about the four stuff right now. Uh, they probably want to get it on Skyrim to counter the Sprout and Hex. Just four stuff your teammate out. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, BKB pulled out by Universe will go on to Bone 7. Fear, Fall Closely Blind does have his ultimate, will not blow it, and that's an easy kill. And did he? Looks like he dodged the ultimate right there from. Yeah. Uh, he might have dodged two yeah, of them. I think he, he backtracked that, and Fado will take another unfortunate spill, will I not would, pop his Bloodstone. I would like to look at that again, because. The way I see I think he backtracked two ultimates. Y yeah, I, I was pretty sure Universe should have died there. Well. I, f I think he got Glimmer Cape, maybe. Ah, oh, maybe. Oh, yeah. Well, Cloud9 looking to capitalize off this. EG is getting very good kills. They 
Like uh, Sinan has to be a little bit careful with their movement. They put two core heroes on top lane. They need Night Stalker there. Yeah, they, they they need to understand what made them win the game in the first place. And I was sticking together and taking good team fights. Now you see the reverse. You see EG is sticking together and just catching these heroes off from time to time. So the they have very good uh, comeback potential. It's also the nature of the lineup to just become stronger at this point. But then now we have Butterfly on Aegis on Gyrocopter. Do they still go for refreshers like they used to do with this strategy on EG? Uh, who's gonna go on refresh? Like Enigma, oh. Chrono. Um, it's very far away from them, I think. I, mean, th I think uh, Void, with the new refresher change, I'm not sure if Void can actually go refreshers. Uh, he this needs point. Aghanims first. Yeah, he definitely needs Aghanims first. And it seems like the Void, he needs to deal a lot of uh, damage too. So he probably needs MKB at this point in the game. Oh, jam up on No Tail. Octarine Core. Oh, doesn't actually go for the kill. So, oh, what, yeah. what's the cooldown duration? It's we're a cooldown of cheese. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what, it doesn't go down? That can't be right. Well, we have 50 second duration and 60 second cooldown. That is insane. Um, Big Daddy posting up outside the base, seeing if any people are smoke, looking for the initiators. Maybe Bone 7 can get a lucky hex before they go in here. He oh, runs going. in. Oh, oh, zero chrono man sphere. chronosphere. Owie locked up in the back. Will get a two man black hole. Universe trying to beat on them in the back. Sumail will channel his requiem. Big Daddy will pop a cheese, but where is his team? This was a super weird team fight. That they got annihilated. A huge black hole. There was some free heroes actually. And the gyro just gave away his ages. Like he wanted to use the BKB after the ages. That was his idea. But uh, they all died during his time of uh, the ages. Respawn. Cena just uh, rushed it because this is a very classic Cena move I've seen a million times. Every time they're in dire and they push the bottom lane, they dive into this area, like behind the Rexes, and they die every time. Yeah, because there's, there's no reason there's for no reason. for diving the tower. Like you have Aegis on Garo, and you have a butterfly. Out of the, void. Like the idea of strategy is you want to let your opponent run into you because then you will win fights. This is how you win every war. Let them run into you and then you kill them. Instead they just run into the deaths. There's yeah. no reason to do it. You just hit the tower, take positions. You have the super darkness. I mean if you get Octarine Core then you have to use it too. You have the darkness going on. So they don't see you anyway. You can take all they can only see the gyrocopter, maybe the profit hitting tower. Then you let them run in, blow their cooldowns, you have ages, and then you just turn the whole fight. And you have all the vision to do what you want, to jump who you want, to hex, and well. Instead, they walk right into EG, allow them to pop out their BKBs, get some sick ultimates off, and EG will live to see another fight. And we see Void go with the rod of uh, just dealing damage. He's going to pick up the MKB here, uh, just to kill the kill the Gyro. And I feel like Gyro is very vulnerable to this Void. Yeah. Uh, can we see the items of the faces boy? Misery goes in and BKB will be popped by fear. We'll be chasing oh. all Misery, but we'll run away with the Glimmer Cape. Or will he get away? He's good. <laughs> Very flashy play by Misery. <laughs> you see, uh, Void is going straight. Oh, he already has his MKB. He's just uh, saving for the buyback. Yeah. This Void is going to be dangerous now. He's, uh, he might just deal with the gyrocopter on his own. What does Gyro have? Does he have, does he have hit Satanic yet? No, he has the four butter. items. Yeah. Uh, mm. It's actually quite farmed compared to what I thought it was. And if Gyro gets, Gyro really needs the Satanic at yeah. this point. He still has his Alpha Wolf as well. I mean, either Satanic or just something, uh, uh, an item from a teammate, like uh, E-Blade on Zeus, for example, would just yeah, allow him to live through it. I think everything. they needed the E-Blade already for the Gyro, just because it's uh, by now they they understand that no matter what they will want to jump the gyrocopter. Yeah, but he goes for the hex, <laughs> which in theory is not bad by any means. But I think the hex is fine. Yeah. It's a strong item with refresh. I feel like um, the main issue Cena has though in all these team fights is that the Furon is not very effective at all. Like yeah. uh, the Furon just TP's in, either he gets black hold or in another fight he got Yul's Requiem. Uh, he's just not able to dish out any damage at all. He he also didn't really go for damage items. Yeah. Um, I think what he has to go for is some Desolator Curas, something like that. Can be very beneficial for C9. He picked up a Maelstrom, but I'm not sure if that does it at this point of the game. Uh, I think it's probably the wrong choice of items. 
So at this point, does EG ever make a move for their own, or they just wait for Cloud9 to keep messing up inside their base? Well, I see we there's the smoke. EG has more confidence now. They saw it. They just wanted a huge fight. They have a really good ward up ages. here, which is about to get dewarded. But this darkness is such a struggle for EG. Yeah. Like they just cannot uh, look at their vision. There's like, oh, what's going on, guys? Where are they? But C9 actually sees them. Yeah, EG trying to make a low percentage play over here. Yeah, it's, it's just a gamble for EG. Like they have, they don't have any choices. They have to go for these gamble smokes. And the question is, how many smokes do they have left? Like either they have like a five-minute cooldown now, like eight-minute cooldown. And I, I don't think they have any more smokes, so they they have to stay in their base. Like they cannot do anything. It looks like EE -E has bought out. I don't believe he has money for buyback at no. this point. I wonder if they're going to make their play now, which it looks like. Yeah, we see the net worth chart is uh, pretty risky, I would say. Like even though C9 is losing these fights, they're always still on top of the net worth because they can just farm the whole map with no danger, and EG has to camp their base. PBD trying to get some more vision out. They might lose their gem over here, though. Uh, if Night Stalker goes closer, he's going to see him. But. Yep, there okay, he is. Go. PPD. Universe looking for a Chrono. Oh, nice blink. Gets one on EE. And no one else to follow. They cheap up Sumail. EE. E. Ah. Oh no, he was not able to live out of that. We see another black hole and another big fight. EE e. with no buyback. And Fada looks like he might die, but they turn around on Fear. Big Daddy running in on him. Bone 7 sprouting up, and Queen of Pain will die in the end. A 2 for 2. Looks like Gem will exchange hands. That was a nice cheap They took the whole fight without the uh, Skyrim Mitch. We saw how strong the Void is with the MKB. He just he practically killed the Gyro alone. Uh, this is why we have been talking about the E-Blade. It would have just nullified the whole idea of Faces White against Gyrocopter. And it could just turn the fight and probably win the game right there and then. Universe is really good about not getting sheeped up before fights, too. Yeah. yeah. Like they, they have Darkness, they have huge vision, they have like Blink Echo. Universe they have... is one of the best position players in the whole world. Like yeah. Top 3 without doubt. He, when he plays these heroes like Void and Tyrant, yeah, he always gets his jump correctly. Oh. EG still kind of cornered in their own base. 15,000 gold lead for Cloud9. Roshan respawning in a few minutes. What's our buyback status at? EE definitely doesn't have one. And Void, Enigma, Zeus. Mjolnir picked up on Furion. Uh, I don't know. I feel like this Furion is quite useless, to be honest. I, mean, I don't know why he went... I mean, let's try to get into his mind. Why did he go for Mjolnir? He knows that they have BKBs. And Mjolnir is, like, less effective the later the game goes. Unless it's for pushing creeps. But he doesn't need to push creeps. Because all the lanes are always pushing into EG. So you prefer, like, a Dezo AC or, like, a Daedalus build? AC would have been nice. Desolator would have been cool. I think AC is the item for sure. Like, they don't have an AC yet. And they also don't have uh, Vlads, and Vlads works on ranged heroes too, so it's should very beneficial. The, shouldn't the NS be picking these up? Yeah, he could have, but he opted for Octarine Core, mm. which is alright, because he's like, he has the idea of the permanent darkness going on. But, uh, well, uh, you need to distribute your items correctly. I think Prophet could have went for Kuros, and uh, Nightstalker could have went for Vlads, and then they would have just had plus 10 armor in their team. Which is so needed against EG's lineup. We're gonna try again, but Garcopters. There you go. I mean, the same thing is gonna happen every yes. single time. And EE, -E, I mean, BKB Satanic does not matter. They do get some damage on a T3, but trying to find a window in between Black Hole cooldowns, and instead EG will capitalize on yet another I mean, this opportunity. C9 has to be cool now. Like, they have to stop doing that. They have to understand that, uh, I mean, Void is jumping gyro every yeah. fight. <laughs> like, all they need to do is find the E-Blade, Glimmer Cape the gyro, so uh, Skyrim spells is nullified as well. And even if the Skyrim ulti goes for the E-Blade, it's not, he's not gonna die from it. He's gonna BKB Satanic and go back, and the BKB of Void will run out after the Chronosphere. They can hex him, and then he can just leech with Satanic. They still have to deal with Midnight Pulse and Black Hole, though, which is... I mean, it, it, I think the BKBs of Enigma is like pretty low already. Mm. And if they blow Chronosphere and uh, Black Hole on Gyro and he can survive like 5 to 10 more seconds, they can just win the team fight. But instead, the Gyro is just dying with the Chronosphere and then they have the Black Hole still to like win the, win the fight, like to kill the other heroes. 
And this might, I mean, at the same time, this might just come back to uh, the free round because free round is like the the second core on uh, on on C9, but he's really not able to dish out any damage at all. Yeah, I and mean, we can pick on so many things. You can pick on the item choices and the, what they're doing in these fights. But um, well, I think at this point, C9 understands. Oh, they catch a lucky break with a long Roche respawn. EE will not have to blow anything, and I mean, at the end of the day, they actually get a fair amount of damage on the T3 for not that much. I guess a little bit of map control lost for them. Uh, yeah. Can we see the items of Queen of Pain? We haven't really paid any attention to the Queen of Pain, but he's he's not having a good game at all. He's very inefficient items. This point, 50 minutes into the game. Oh, he also didn't skill up the Shadow Strike. It's weird. It's actually very good to skill up. Oh. There's the E-Blade at least. Yep. Yeah, maybe now they can finally save no e. for e -blade. So we'll see if this comes into effect for the next chrono. So pretty much make E Superman. They should have gotten a Solar Crest earlier. Yeah. Like Medallion him. Yeah, they could have Glimmer had cape. these items yeah. 15 minutes ago, I think. Glimmer Cape, AC, Vlads. There are so many things that they could have thrown on E. Yeah, I can it's definitely see that. And until he survives for BKB ult or yeah, BKB uh, Satanic. But uh, Dota, so Dota, so EG, they, they do not know that they have E Blade, I think. But if they do, they can go for the Diffuser Blade next. Mm. But it's the Zeus who has the E Blade, so he can refresh it. Um, E.G. no hope of contesting this Roche, even with all their ultimates up, the lack of vision yeah. severely hindering their movement around the map. So we'll see if uh, C9 does the quick thing this, this time with Aegis. Um, um, since there's no refresh on Void, they just need to bait out the first corner and then just survive whatever comes next, be it the Black Claw or the, or the whatever. Oh, uh, yeah. I f I feel like that uh, Lotus Orb might be a good pickup for EG because there's like a lot of target items at this point in the game. There's hexes. Who's gonna afford it though? Yeah, that's a tough choice. Maybe the Queen of Pain, but at the same time, Queen has to go into the carry route too. Yeah, she's really poor. Shadow Fiend's slot like limited. If this Quap gets a Kuros, maybe he will help his team quite a lot in this team fights. Alright, so this, I, I like this, what they're doing now, because both have realizes that he doesn't do anything in the team fights, so he's just gonna go for the buildings instead. Yeah, that's which is the, the correct way of playing. Yeah. So, whenever. They go on bottom, he's gonna go on top. Well, they kind of need that ward dewarded. I don't know if No Tail's gonna move up. Oh, yeah. Oh. They're gonna spot it out. Okay, there they go. Bone Seven still hiding in the trees. Yeah, he's gonna go for it soon. He's just waiting for the creeps. The, the creeps entered base now. Oh, there they go. T3 he's, he's gonna fall going a couple right hits. Oh, they won't go on E. No Glimmer Cape, no nothing. He does have his Aegis and they will tank it. Universe blew his he's BKB. Be Black Hole this time. But there's the E Blade. Black Hole coming out, no cooldowns pop, he's still pretty healthy. BKB Satanic pop, EE still trucking away, sitting in the midnight pulse though. EB comes out and EE is living. Bone 7 TP's into the fight, big call down, he'll hit nobody. Rax exposed, Universe has died, he will expend his buyback. Rage Rax quickly falls, now EG completely out of ultimates. And another Rax, and that was just with the Aegis. Very simple, very simple. That was the correct use of Aegis to see. Universe doesn't have his on. buyback up, goes in on EE. What's the range on Glimmer Cape used, by the way? It's like 800, I think. 800, maybe 900. They, I don't think they've been able to get it off on any of the fights. Well, Bone 7 gets blown up, trying to take out the last set of racks. EE with eyes on a prize, focus on the melee racks. BKB, Universe will go on to the Gyrocopter. Not sure if he's going to survive that much longer. Gets forced nice out. Stuff. Very and nice for us stuff. Satanic popped up, but he's not able to get that many right clicks off. Bone 7 on the left side, trying to take down Sumail. Almost takes down Universe and Shadow Fiend. Fada will finish one off. Will he get the other blink up in just a second? But TP'd out. Yeah, nice. TP'd out. And still two sets of, or one set of racks left for Evil Geniuses. Looks like very hectic fight, but in the end, Cloud9 walk away with so darn much. But that was a clean fight by C9 this time. They used the Aegis correctly, they just hit the tower, they let them run in, into them. They stayed all behind the Gyro instead of diving their tier 3 towers. And uh, like in order to kill the Aegis from Gyro, the Void has to use BKB. And it's already a 5 second BKB. And when the BKB is off, the Void is, uh, is not dangerous anymore. And Gyro is going to come back into the fight.
So what is EG's game plan at this point? Like, they, they, they lose one more fight, they lose the game. And yeah. they can't wait until next Aegis because C9 has finally figured out a decent formula for breaking high ground. The, the, the dream for EG is to get the smoke and just get a jump on them outside their base, possibly, and then do something. But that's not even enough because C9 is going to have buybacks. Like, at this point, the game is so hard for EG. They're going to be locked in their base because of Prophet pushing and most importantly because of Darkness. Like we already see Universe is playing more confident now. Oh, he gets hexed up. Big Daddy will go in. Big Echo coming out from Misery. Like, will yeah. take down Universe. Universe has no buyback. He's down 415. Yeah, we, we can't like do Instant any GG. blame. This is like he has to do something. He understands yeah. like even if they would win a team fight in their base one more time, it wouldn't change the game. The lane's gonna get pushed in. There's no vision for them. C9 is gonna have four to five buybacks. They just go again. There's no way EG can take a Roshan fight because even if C9 uh, decides to not take the Roshan. Profit can just TP to the base and kill their Rexes. Yeah. Cool. Or just get mega creeps. 